Roy bandits invaded a mosque at Saya Saya village in the Kara local government area of Kaduna state on Friday, killing seven worshippers. Reports say the incident happened when Muslim worshippers were observing the Ishai, that's sunset prayers, at a local mosque in the area. Now, five yet to be identified worshippers, including a vigilante leader, were gunned down by the hoodlums during the prayers. Two other victims were killed by the bandits in other parts of the village. Meanwhile, Governor Ubasani of Kaduna uh, State has ordered security agencies to hunt down the killers. Sani described the killings by the bandits as wicked and barbaric. The governor uh, has also directed security agencies to thoroughly investigate the incident, go after the perpetrators and make sure they are brought to book. Amidst this, Enugu Capital Territory Development Agency has confirmed four children of the same family killed in a building collapse in a Greek quarters in Bermena in the coal camp area of the state. Now, the chairman of the ECTDA, Uche Anya, gave the confirmation after inspecting the site of the collapsed building. Anya noted that the bungalow located at the agri quarters in the coal camp area collapsed on Friday around 8 p.m. after a downpour. He said the structure, which was initially approved for animal husbandry, was converted to a residential building. Well, still with me virtually to, to talk about this is John Akirili. Uh, John is a social commentator. Now, John, uh, John, I beg your pardon, for... From, from the first, you know, the first part is, this structure was designed as, you know, an animal, you know, structure to house animals. What does this say to um, lack of housing for people to the point where people decided to convert this to residential structures, residential facility, and hundreds, a lot of people were residing in this structure. What does this say, really? John? Thank you. Uh, I think for me, we, we have many problems that is behaving in the country. And one of the solution is we must be counted. Every head must be counted. Even those in diaspora should be counted. And that is even some of the ones that I think is very simple to even count. Now this is it. If you don't count your people, how do you get to know the number of house deficit you have? You have? Some states do not even know the number of childbirth they have in a day. They don't know. So in a place where you don't even know the number of child births you have, the only number of deaths and on a daily basis, you, you don't even have this data and information. It's difficult for you to make plannings. If you know that, okay, in this local government, we have influx of people more. That comes to the issue of a database. Now we have more people. More people means that there will be more pressure on your roads. And that will reduce, you know, the, 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 the duration of usage of that road, which means there needs to be constant maintenance on the road. All right? It means that in terms of housing, you need to create or build more houses to accommodate more people coming into, um, into, in, in, into that locality. Also, that can also help you to make projections. If you can have 20,000 people coming to Lagos in January, it means that between January and June, we can have over 800,000 people coming to Lagos. And what should we do in terms of housing, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of road, in terms of bridges, in terms of social, you know, what are the things we need to put in check? That is how a government that has foresight, fairness, look out for. When you have these numbers, they help you make plans. You have forecasting, you can make forecasts, and then you can work towards that forecast that you have forecasted already. So I think for me, it's it's sad because we four wonderful children that would have been, you know, one of the greatest in their chosen fields. But these lives were cut short 
Why? Because of the negligence of some people. Why? Because of the, 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 the failed system. The failed system. Because ordinarily, if there is a working system, can a structure that is scheduled for animals boundary be converted? So what is the work of a local government? Next question to you now. Should the government be blamed for this, Reed? That structure was supposed to be for animal husbandry, and it was converted. All right. Uh, should we blame the government for this? Now, bear in mind that there's a structure like that. There's a, there's a, the uh, National Secretariat, the former one, Idikoi. Now, that structure has been abandoned for a long time. I don't know if you've ever had the, the opportunity to visit that place. If you go there, you would understand that people live there. People have converted it to housing. Are they supposed to do so? I don't think so. I don't think they're, they're supposed to convert it to residential structures. Now, should the government be blamed for this, really? Moses, Moses, let's, let's say this truth to ourselves and let's not lie to ourselves. How come when our governors go to London, enter public transport, even public bus, and start bus? It's because there's a system that works and is working. And so when you get there, you know that you must, you must stay on the line. Your madness from Nigeria cannot work in UK. Ordinarily, you will be corrected from the airport by yourself. without nobody talking to you. That is the government. So the point is, Nigeria is, is being in a situation where we, we have a kind of, you know, psychological abnormality over the years. All right? That is the truth of the matter. So the point is, the government needs to put in policies structures that can check me all these things so let me ask you this question that place was agreed was approved to be animals boundary so what which child of animals boundary in that local government how often do they go on monitoring and checking of the facilities under their watch so when i say the government i know what i'm saying to you if there's a month in month out check on all of those facilities that are registered under the local government where that locality is do you want to say to me that you will not know that this place has been converted from animals boundary into a residential apartment? Won't you know? Okay. Some of these people even know that the animals boundary house has been converted, but they look away. Mm. The issue of Ikoi, the sector that you talk about in Ikoi, are you saying that government officials do not know that people are living there? What did they do about it? Nothing. That shows the, 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 the government's inefficiency. That's what I'm talking about. See, Moses, let's not lie to ourselves. When government take their right to position in Nigeria and do the right thing, every other thing will reset automatically. If the police will do what they ought to do as a policeman and give you top-notch quality in terms of service delivery for policing, you will see that things will change. Okay. So if people know that this is this is meant to be, you know, uh, animals running it, even in the neighborhood, people know. Okay? So if it's, it's a thing that you are, okay, what, what, what's that? Well, you say you have neighborhood watch, if I have to be a state like Lagos. So they, they won't say that they don't know that something like that is happening. How do you get to see that when they are building a structure, there's a government that comes and give you a, 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 a red sign on the wall of those buildings? How do they know that they are having the construction there? They get to know. They have their own way of making findings. But they decide to look away. And that is what I think that should change in terms of our attitude as government, is that we should not be reactionary. We should be proactive. We should look at things and see how we can avoid them before it happens. Mm -hmm. OK? Let it not happen. And then you say, oh, we, we, we condemn in totality. We, we commiserate with the family of the lost ones. Mind you, life that is lost can never be regained again. And so that is why I'm saying it's the government. Moses, in this same country, a vessel was apprehended. The vessel that was that was converted from one, one vessel to now a vessel that is literally crude oil. After being apprehended, even though I'm against them burning of the vessel, because I wanted them to even you know, get rid of the matter and let's know who and who are the people behind it. They they burnt the vessel, vessel destroyed. The owner of the vessel is now is, is even suing the government for burning the vessel.
That will show you the height we, 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 we have attained in terms of abnormality in the country. And it's only the government that can, you know, it, it's from the head. Once the head don't correct, every other part of the body go correct. If the head still get headache, but the head no go feel work cool because head get headache. So if the head is good and is straight, every other part of the body will work well. And so that's why I'm saying it's the government. In terms of database, it's the government. In terms of monitoring of people, it's the government. How come you go to other countries of the world, all right? And when your license is expired, you cannot drive a car. Because you know if you drive a car, about two, five kilometers, you're going to the policeman who can stop you at random and ask you, can I see your license, please? And if your license is expired, you know the consequence of you, of you driving with a license that is expired. You know. Okay? So these are ways I'm saying to you that if you have a working system, a system that works, people automatically will come. But in a case where you have people that always want to cut corners, we are not going anywhere. All so right. this that happened, government is, co is culpable. The agency in the locality is also should be questioned. As well. At what point did they get approval for that place to be animals boundary? Who approved it? Which local government? Which agency? When was the last time they had a physical check? on that same facility. Because I, I, I don't think that conversion was done last month or last three months. It must have been over a year, Moses. So it means that somebody somewhere just go to local government, sit down, have no job to do, or collect salary just for going and sleeping in office. Whereas there are some things that they should be doing in the locality in terms of checking infrastructure, checking right. agencies, checking, you know, all right, John, buildings you, that have if, been registered if, under if them observe, and see how they can put them on their toes to do the right thing. All right, then. If you observe, we are lumping two topics, actually. Uh, we are also looking at uh, the bandits' invasion of a mosque uh, in a village uh, in the Ikara local government area of Kaduna State. Uh, one that happened on Friday where Muslim worshippers were, you know, observing uh, the sunset prayers and... Um, Five yet to be identified um, wo um, wash worshippers, including the vigilante, were gone down. Now, what would you say uh, is the level of insecurity? Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it getting? Is uh, is insecurity increasing under this administration, or how would you describe it really under this current administration? Now, bear in mind that this is after new service chiefs have been, you know. Uh, given the mantle. Go ahead, John. Let me let me say to you that if you like have uh, new service chiefs every now and then, when things are not in place, they're not in place. At certain times, that number that our was in terms of security, you can you can't say you are policing over two hundred million people. What is if we do uh, if we do national censor? You might be shocked that we might get to 280 million or even 300 million. You might be shocked. And so we're having less than 300,000 police officers. That for me is, is zero. No country of the world can, can have good security in that, in, that, in, in, in that pattern. No. Okay? That's one. Two also is that we should check the hierarchy of these institutions. Money that has been for release, how are they spending it? There's also internal corruption from the hierarchy of the security uh, apparatus in the country, and that needs to be purged. If not, you see a police officer, you know, who is also in connivance with these bandits. That's the case in this country. Where you call a police officer and say there's you have a distress call and they tell you that uh, in which place is that, which kind of they carry. We know get fuel. Have you gone to a police officer, a police station case, and they tell you that guy, we, we know get bad one paper for you to write statements? Go and check what I'm saying if it's a lie. So we must get to a point where. Even the police officer who is working as a police officer has his self-esteem in check. And so for no reason, we need to, to be in connivance with the bandits. I don't want to talk about the issue of our politicians, you know, because I, I hate talking about those. The only thing they'll say to you, 
they will condemn, we condemn. But they know that, and that's why I said to you, I think we discussed this issue with when somebody visited the president at when he assumed the office, and he said that these guys that uh, the, your, your children can 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 commit a, a, a sin and they want to repent, if the person is still in this country, and the person is still watching news, listening to news now, talk of people. Go to churches, keep people in churches, go to mosques, keep people in mosques. Okay, what is your offense with these people in church and mosque? These are not the, 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 the bane of a problem. The bane of the school class, your senators, those are the people you should go for. Now, do you think... Yeah, you should go for. Do you think, do you think uh, these, these bandits were trying to pass across a message, if you consider the way and manner in which uh, the killings were, were done? Do you think they were trying to pass a message? Is they, there is what they want. Don't forget that we have a Gumi who went into the into the forest to talk to these people. Don't forget there was a BBC documentary in this same country. These people were interviewed. Don't forget that they also have apologists in government who are even top officers. And so the question is, some people just want this country to tear apart. And they don't care who's else is God because they have an ulterior agenda, which I don't know the kind of agenda they have in their mind. But the point of the matter is, if the government, see, it does not take anything to level the whole of Samisa Forest in 24 hours, no even with four Moses. And once there's truly a high handedness from the military, these so-called bandits will go and sit down somewhere. Some that farming will go into farming. Some that will go to farming will go to farming. Some that go into fashion will go to fashion design. Some that will do will do shoemaker. It's because they have been pampered and they have made it a lucrative business. A bandit is not a millionaire. You know, they have turned it into a multi-millionaire industry. It's not these ones. Okay, this one don't get money. K4, K4. Use those phones as scapegoat, do videos, and send those videos online. And then tell the government, are you, are you kidding me? And there's no money to, to budget. There's no money to more vehicles. Who should be buying more trucks, more cars, more vehicles for patrol? If not called governors. But do you know what they do, Moses? Instead of safeguarding the locality, they rather safeguard themselves and their family by buying bulletproof cars. So I think the thing that should happen first is that no public office order to use a bulletproof car. Mm -hmm. Not even a pastor. Make all of us dead here. So you will understand that for you to be safe, for a family to be safe, every other person in the country must be safe. You use bulletproof car. Your police escort, no bulletproof car. And so when they attack your own car, you can escape. But the police officers will die. They don't have families. And so these are the questions. So the amount of money you use in purchasing a bulletproof car, 300 million, do you know how many e -locks that would generate if you give you on that money and tell him, produce patrol van for our police officers? Also, another angle is the angle of lack of maintenance attitude from our police officers. Mm -hmm. Moses, when they give out this vehicle to police officers, go and check how it is, how it looks like. You see that it's always good, right? Mm -hmm. It's new, brand new. Check that same vehicle mm -hmm. after four months. And so we should get to a point where we tell our police officers that anybody who is in charge of this police vehicle, either it's a Sienna, it's an Elox, it's a car for operational vehicles maintenance culture dangote gave out some cars to police officers moses just take a random town and look at how the state of the car is that is that will tell you the kind of the kind of system we have and so we should not if you know that you have a population of two hundred thousand people about fifty thousand police officers then you are in for business they also know that they cannot do anything because whatever you do, somebody somewhere knows you and in no time you'll be tracked down. But they know that they can do these things and get away with that nothing will happen. They just make headline. After two, three days, you forget about it and story will come up big. 
and that is how we have you know reduced ourselves to that kind of people so I, now we should know that in terms of security let me not lie to you people want to be safe and any country that is safe will automatically you know attract investment in billions of dollars and that's why you'll be viable so if this manager will say that we want to spend a lot of money on security as a matter of fact if you say of the budget should go into security that might not be too much for me if you ask me okay you need to recruit only a police force as a matter of fact you need to even recruit local police who will be on this at least a street a street should have minimum of four and when there's police officers everywhere Moses, how will crime Thrive. come up even when they are planning somebody somehow will get intelligence and so nigeria as a country if truly want to get it we should prioritize security because if each an inch of the country is secured we will have more productivity we will have more money coming to our system we will have stable employment for our people and right. everybody will be in their area and things will work normally okay right so that is what i think is true so let our governors our political class stop buying bulletproof cars rather they should um, put those funds into security so that our police officers will have enough Moses, there should even be a standing order okay that police so there's a local there's a fleet station close to your, your station every time you are going for park and get 25 liters of fuel every day and then you can patrol length and breadth of that street tell me if a police patrolling your street 247 how will crime come up all right, I must say, I must, I must, I must thank you at this point, John. Uh, I must say a very big thank you to you for staying with us on the program. We really do appreciate your contributions. All right, we'll take a little break now. A, a very quick one. When we when we come back, we'll uh, go into business, entertainment, and sports. <laughs> 